hello everyone in this video i am going to explain about integral controller due to limitation of proportional controller where there always exist an offset between the process variable and set point so that to overcome this disadvantage or limitation we need to use another controller in conjunction with the P controller you look at the response curve for proportional controller here it is you can see offset is continuously present even at large value of kp look at here to remove that offset integral controller is needed which provides necessary action to eliminate the steady state error it integrates the error over a period of time until error value reaches to zero it holds the value to final control device at which error becomes zero the offset error of proportional mode occurs because the controller cannot adapt to changing external condition that is changing load in other words the zero error output is fixed value the integral mode eliminates this problem by allowing the controller to adapt to changing external conditions by changing the zero error output the need of integral action shows up when it is noted that even with proportional action correction the error does not go to zero in time suppose a system has a some error that is ep and proportional mode provides a change in a controller output kp into ep as we watch the error in a time we note that the error may reduce but it does not go to zero in fact it may becomes constant so integral action is needed integral action is provided by summing the error over a time multiplying that sum by a gain and adding the result to the present controller output you can see that if the error makes random exertion above and below zero the net sum will be zero so the integral action will not contribute but if the error becomes positive or negative for an extended period of time the integral action will begin to accumulate and make changes to the controller output in the mathematics of continuous function such as error summation is represented by integration therefore this mode is represented by an integral equation p of t is equal to ki integration of 0 to t uh, ep dt plus p of 0 where p of 0 is the controller output when the integral action starts the gain ki express how much controller output is present is needed for every percent time accumulation of error now this figure shows how the rate of change of controller output depends upon value of error and the size of the gain figure shows how the actual controller output would look if a constant error occur you can see how the controller output begins to ramp up at the rate determined by the gain in the case of gain ki the output finally saturates at 100 percent and no further action can occur let us summarize the characteristics of integral mode first characteristic is if the error is zero the output stays fixed at a value equal to what it was when the error went to zero and second characteristic is if the error is not zero the output will begin to increase or decrease at a rate of ki percentage per second for every one percent of error now look at performance by only integral controller what happens to the response curve look at here 
I have added this only value of KP. Now see if I use only I controller. See how the response curve behaves. Now I am going to add I controller in conjunction with the P controller. Now see what changes are takes place into the response curve. Now look at the advantages of integral controller. It eliminates steady state error or offset. Second advantage is decrease the rise time. Now disadvantages are leads to minor increase in overshoot. Next disadvantage is could make the system less stable and increases settling time. Now <coughs> applications of integral controller. You can use the integral controller in conjunction with the P controller that is proportional controller. Thanks for watching this video. For more details, you can watch my other videos based on the controllers.